guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I feel like a YouTuber now because we're doing these pre-recorded um, videos for you guys. Welcome back. Um, if you don't know where you're at, you're at the Parkview Student Ministries YouTube channel. On Thursdays, we do what's called a deep dive. So we go a little bit deeper and kind of different topics about the Bible, kind of about what the Bible says about different topics within society. Um, and if you missed last week, we started talking about sin and kind of what is sin, we talked about kind of where it came from, maybe, our relationship with God, with sin. We talked about the covenant and kind of repentance of our sin, too. Um, and so this week, we're going to continue talking about sin, but we might go just a little bit deeper or just take another step towards different aspects of sin, kind of what, what does sin mean for our lives. Um, so Josh is going to be back here again, kind of answering those questions that maybe you have that I definitely have and that just kind of want to know a little bit more about what sin is and kind of what it means as a Christian. So Josh, I'm going to kind of start with that question of what does sin mean for us as Christians or for our viewers who are Christians? So obviously there's a huge difference in pre and post mm -hmm. uh, repentance salvation mm -hmm. in terms of the impact sin has. Uh, Pre-salvation, we like we talked about how we are born in this sinful state of not being in right relationship with God mm -hmm. and how it's such a uh, overarching aspect of our life. Mm -hmm. um, and now that uh, a person turns to Christ and is saved by him, mm -hmm. they don't instantly become perfect. Mm -hmm. And so sin will look different uh, for that person because they are now have this relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And one thing that a lot of people really struggle with is I accepted Christ, but mm -hmm. I'm still sinning. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. And so one of the first things I want to sort of take dig apart is uh, what that means from a sort of legal perspective mm -hmm. and then go into uh, what that means in terms of like a relationship with God and, yeah. and more stuff. But yeah. from a legal perspective, we are saved by the free gift of God mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times uh, people will think, well, this sin is evidence that I am not saved. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really struggling with, have I been saved because of this? Mm -hmm. And uh, Romans 8, 1 is really clear that mm -hmm. there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. When Christ died for your sins... Like for us today, he died for our sins before we were even born, yeah. right? Because none of us are 2,000 years old. Sure. And so the, the idea that God died for future sins, mm -hmm. that, that includes sins we have yet to commit. And obviously, we're not aiming to commit those sins, mm -hmm. uh, but we acknowledge that uh, we're screwed up and imperfect yeah. and that we... Uh, are fighting this this natural inclination of not being in right relationship with God. Sure. And so the, the very first thing I want to make sure is clear is that as a Christian, our sin affects us, but it doesn't affect our legal standing with God. Mm -hmm. Our legal standing with God is that God, Jesus, mm -hmm. died for our sins. Mm -hmm. He bore the punishment for those sins. Mm -hmm. And as such, we are uh, accepted in right relationship with God, we are uh, saved mm -hmm. and uh, given the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And none of that is dependent on our perfection. Mm -hmm. It's dependent on our repentance, on our acceptance of Christ. Sure. And so because our actions now, maybe we sin and we go against God, mm -hmm. that doesn't change that Jesus still died for us, mm -hmm. that we've still given our life to him. It just means we're being, you know, we are, we are falling, we, we are screwing sure. up. Sure, absolutely. So legally, there's not a legal change that happens if you sin mm -hmm. once you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. The legal change is forgiven by Jesus, period. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, can we go back to that verse that you read? Was it Romans 8, 1? Yeah. Um, could you kind of maybe explain condemnation? I mean, I've, I've read yeah. that verse before, but... Quite frankly, like, what does condemnation mean? Or can so, you so it comes from the word condemn. Okay. Like a condemned building sure. is one that is structurally unstable, and it, they're like, this needs to be torn down because mm -hmm. it's not functional as a building. Mm -hmm. And so there's a degree of, 
of judgment against mm-hmm. that is is meant in this word. Mm-hmm. Like there is no judgment against mm-hmm. those who are in Christ Jesus sure. because of Christ Jesus. Sure. So so even though we sin, there is not God doesn't stop and pronounce a new judgment against us mm-hmm. that we then need to account for. Mm-hmm. It is our lives mm-hmm. as a whole being submitted to Christ mm-hmm. and Christ paying for our lives as a whole. Yeah. And that includes all our past sin. It also includes all our future sin, mm-hmm. which obviously we want to avoid. But Right. Um, We're sinners, so yeah. it's going to happen. And so the there's no condemnation. There is no judgment against mm-hmm. Those, like, God has judged Christ in our stead. Yeah. There's no new judgment against us. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you for going a little bit deeper into that. Um, But now that we kind of know a little bit more about what sin means for us as Christians, um, let's go a little bit further. How does our sin affect our relationship with God? I know last week we talked a lot about that, or you talked a lot about that relationship with God. So how does our sin now affect that relationship? So one thing here that people can sort of assume incorrectly is that once I repent of this sin, Mm -hmm. it stops having an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, is actions and sins especially Mm -hmm. have consequences, Mm -hmm. right? If, if, um, I was to steal something expensive and then I repented, well, I would still, you know, have to do the jail time or the fine or whatever. Sure. Uh, and even though There is no condemnation. There's no judgment. Mm -hmm. The consequences for sin aren't God necessarily. It's not necessarily God like being like, oh, well, you did that thing, so I'm going to smite you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a sort of natural consequence or a for repentant sin, Mm -hmm. right? Or if I'm like committed to this sin, I'm like, no, God, Mm -hmm. you be quiet. I'm going to do this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, then the Bible will talk about uh, God uh, dis- disciplining us mm-hmm. like a child, like a father disciplines his son. Mm-hmm. And it's not uh, sort of malicious out of like, I'm angry at you, so I'm lashing out. Mm-hmm. It is meant to be guided, mm-hmm. guide us. It's meant to be uh, restorative in nature. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the idea that uh sin doesn't have any consequences if we have accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't have any consequences in terms of our salvation. Mm -hmm. It does have consequences in terms of our experience. Okay. Uh, Because uh, it's very clear that uh, we can, just because we have this this salvation, this relationship with God, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean we can't... uh, be in a bad relationship, I guess. Mm-hmm. Bad relationship in the sense of like, uh, if I did something to really offend you, mm-hmm. it's not like we stop knowing each other. Sure. It's just that I've been dumb and there needs to be some repair here. Sure. And so uh, sin uh, is intrinsic to uh, our state here. Mm-hmm. Like it, sin is not something artificial Mm -hmm. to a sort of believer's experience. Mm -hmm. We were sort of born into this state. Mm -hmm. And so it's very hard for us to consistently pursue God. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a couple of verses that I want to hit on it that like Paul really illustrates how hard dealing with sin can be. Mm -hmm. Um, So Romans 6, 16 do you not know that you present yourselves to anyone as, if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Mm-hmm. So an important thing there is that obedience doesn't lead to salvation. Mm-hmm. Obedience leads to righteousness, because, mm-hmm. you know, repenting, turning to Christ, that's mm-hmm. what leads to salvation. Mm-hmm. But uh, by choosing to engage in sin, Mm -hmm. even as a believer, we can allow ourselves to be enslaved by sin. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, it's it's, uh, become intrinsic to the framework that we uh, view and that we act out in the world Mm -hmm. such that it's kind of 
we can allow it to become inseparable mm -hmm. from what we think, what we do, how we act. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's very clear uh, in the Bible that we really need to be intentional about fighting that. Mm -hmm. um, if we think that, well, this is something that like good Christians have solved, they don't really have to deal with. Mm -hmm. The Bible's pretty clear that everyone is dealing with this. Mm -hmm. Like Paul himself says uh, in Romans 7, for I do not understand my own actions. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about he loves God, he wants to pursue God, mm -hmm. and even Paul himself is finding himself mm -hmm. struggling with sin even though he hates it. Mm -hmm. And so this is universal in terms of you will never be righteous enough to not struggle with sin. Mm -hmm. um, we could go into the timeline of sanctification and why that story changes once we're uh, in the new creation in heaven. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to focus a little bit more on uh, sin here than end times. Sure. Um, Uh, Romans 8, 13, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But in the spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. If by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Um, and I'm going to read back to back with 1 Peter 2, 11. Beloved, I urge you as travelers and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Um, so... Sin is not a passive thing we choose. Mm -hmm. It is a very active thing we need to confront. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very easy for us to uh, be, allow us, ourselves to get too comfortable with sin mm -hmm. and to excuse sin too often. Mm -hmm. But part of being in right relationship with God is just very simply showing God the value he deserves. Mm -hmm. And if God deserves everything, that includes my sin, mm -hmm. that inc or my willingness to sin. Mm -hmm. That if God, if my view of God is accurate, mm -hmm. my desire for him over my sin mm -hmm. should just be disproportionately immense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you kind of touched on salvation and righteousness in a few verses ahead. Um, if I was talking to maybe a friend of mine who doesn't believe in Jesus, but not consider them to be a Christian, what would you kind of talk to them about with salvation and righteousness? Because I think a lot of times from my past experience with some friends, like they view it more as righteous instead of with salvation. So kind of how would you distinguish the two um, for help too of like talking to our friends about yeah. our sin too? So there's a C.S. Lewis quote I like, which mm -hmm. is that uh, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the basis of our issue with sin is not that people need to stop sinning. Mm -hmm. It's that people need to be in right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. One of the cruelest things we can do as a Christian mm -hmm. is to tell someone, you need to live like a Christian before you've met Christ because they are experiencing all that struggle of combating the sin nature mm -hmm. with none of the uh, help from the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. with none of the uh, feedback from God. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's very disheartening and very uh, tiring to, to expect that from someone. It's a great way to turn them away from ever having a real relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Uh, what people need is a right relationship with God, mm -hmm. and that w in that context, mm -hmm. their sin will and needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks for that uh, kind of clarification. I kind of interrupted you in the middle yeah, of that. No, it's all but good. Do you have any other like verses or anything like that that you kind of wanted to go into of like how does it affect our relationship, or did you have anything else to say uh, when I? No, I'll, I'll say that uh, Ephesians 4.30 says, mm -hmm. and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God mm -hmm. for whom, by whom you were uh, sealed for the day of redemption, in that uh, our sin isn't nothing to God. Mm -hmm. Like it's talking about grieving the Holy Spirit, as mm -hmm. in like grief, mm -hmm. like just immense sadness, because um, sin is not this sort of neutral entity that God sort of wipes away. It is mm -hmm. this it is this affront to uh 
how God created us to be and to our relationship with him. Yeah. And even though he will step in to help us overcome that, mm-hmm. um, it's not as though it has no impact sure. uh, in on us. We, we still need to be very diligent about mm-hmm. pursuing God, mm-hmm. not just allowing whatever to happen. Because yeah. if we just are fine with it and allow whatever to happen, are we truly valuing God for who mm-hmm. he is? Mm-hmm. Or are we just comfortable with the amount of God we have? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's important. Um, you've given us or given me to uh, a lot of different verses or different parts, passages in the Bible. Um, but if I wanted to like read it for myself too, is there a certain book in the Bible, chapter of a book in the Bible that you would recommend if someone maybe going to read um, to kind of understand sin a little bit better? I guess, I, I mean, mean, sin's talked about in the entire Bible. Um, but I mean, if someone wanted to go, where yeah, would you send them? Yeah, uh, I mean, if we're going broad scale, mm-hmm. Romans talks a lot about mm-hmm. sin, especially with um, it being a sort of uh, theology mm-hmm. centric. I mean, it's just it's just a book pat where Paul outlines sure. his theology like beginning to end in a way that he doesn't in a lot of his other letters. Mm -hmm. And so there is, Romans is chock full of of him talking about sin because Mm -hmm. it's such a uh, central part to human experience and the salvation story. Uh, In another chapter, a lot shorter, that uh, talks a lot about sin is Psalm 51. Mm -hmm. Uh, The psalmist really is is talking about his sin, how he... um, you know, regrets it and is struggling with it Mm -hmm. in a way that uh, is very uh, sobering and Mm -hmm. impactful. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to go read Psalm 51, it's in your Bible. (laughs) That's helpful. I think just even for myself, too, to kind of learn a little bit more about sin, too, or for our viewers watching, if they, I mean, what if they don't want to take our word for it? Like, what if they wanted to read the Bible, too? So I think that's important that you addressed and gave us a little bit of a place to start and then... If you go read that and kind of want to talk a little bit more, I know Josh would love to talk to you about it. I can try my best to point you in places that I enjoy reading about it too. Um, But now to kind of like maybe wrap up kind of last week and this week, we talked a little bit about sin, how it affects our relationship with God. So now like what do we do about it? Okay. So uh, I'm going to start with an analogy. Okay. And that is there is a cylinder like Mm -hmm. a tube or a Mm -hmm. pipe. And it's sealed at one end. Sure. And there is a ball that is perfectly sized Mm -hmm. to the tube in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And how much force would it take for you to pull that ball out? And the answer is, you're like, oh, well, the ball weighs two pounds, let's say. It would probably take two pounds of force. Okay. But if the ball is perfectly sized to the tube, it's creating a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And because there's a vacuum... The amount of force you need is just monumental. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't do it. A bodybuilder couldn't do it. Sure. Um, It it just creates this monumental force. But if there was a little valve at the back of that tube Mm -hmm. connected to like a pressurized air canister Mm -hmm. labeled Jesus, (laughs) right? And you open that valve, that ball would shoot out. Sure. Like a potato gun, (laughs) right? And so a lot of... I've never seen a potato gun before but anyway continue (laughs) and so a lot of times we try to tackle sin Mm -hmm. by focusing too much on the sin and not enough on introducing Christ to that Mm -hmm. situation absolutely Uh, there was a time when uh, I was meeting with I don't even remember I was meeting up to multiple times a day Mm -hmm. with different guys who wanted accountability Mm -hmm. because I had had uh, some success dealing with uh, lust and removing it Mm -hmm. uh, as an issue. And that was something that guys just really want freedom from. Sure. And so the, I was meeting with like, we're talking like 10 guys because they're like, Oh, like I I want accountability. I want this out of my life. Let's meet, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I didn't see a lot of fruit because I was just like, well, let's just look at this sin. Mm-hmm. And it was, our, our approach was too like anti-sin focused mm-hmm. and not enough introducing Jesus into these areas focused. Mm-hmm. 
And so we were pulling against that vacuum mm -hmm. because we desperately wanted it out, mm -hmm. but we were just getting tired. Mm -hmm. And by introducing Christ into that area of sin, mm -hmm. uh, it, it really changes the game entirely. Mm -hmm. If you want to be filled up with Christ and not with sin, mm -hmm. the answer isn't to pour sin out of your life, it's to fill Christ into your life mm -hmm. because that is that will get rid of the sin on its own. Absolutely. I think you bring up a good point with your example of um, being an accountability partner too. Of I've been an account accountability partner, friend for people too. And I think sometimes for me, I, I try to fix the problem when it's Jesus who needs to go fix their hearts too. And so I think that's important to recognize that you can be an accountability partner to someone. And I, while well, I think that's important, especially when you go and repent those sins, if someone knows it, and then they can also actively be helping you to really be repenting and not yeah. just, I forget what the other word was. Um, regretting. That's the word, regretting. Yeah. Um, I think that's important, yeah. but absolutely, those guys are probably trying to get that validation from you instead of maybe from Jesus. Yeah, it, it was more of we were task-focused mm -hmm. rather than uh, Christ-focused. Sure, absolutely. Um, and, and that's, like, we highly encourage accountability partners mm -hmm. because we are not meant to live through this life on our own. Yeah. Uh, and in that process, uh, something that you should do and something you should expect from your accountability partner is mm -hmm. not, I'm telling you so that I've told someone and I'm guilt free sure. and we're done. Sure. Or I'm telling you so you can fix my problem. Mm -hmm. Or I'm telling you to get your advice. Mm -hmm. It's I'm telling you so you can help me see how mm -hmm. to insert God into this yeah, and how I can be relying on God in this. Absolutely. And so there's a, t a lot of times we get intimidated by accountability because it's like, I can't solve your problems. Why are you coming to me? But, right. but it's really about how can we be helping each other mm -hmm. insert Christ into our lives more deeply such mm -hmm. that it uh, uproots the sin issues we're struggling with. Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to, uh, let's solve this together. Mm -hmm. It's really, let's turn to Christ together and let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about what that means. Because mm -hmm. everyone has blind spots. Yeah. I, before you go into your other yeah. illustration, if you haven't watched our deep dive on community, now would be a great time to pause this video and go watch Sarah and I talk about community because Josh could just uh, explain to you how important it is for us to be in community with other believers. But I think you had another illustration. Yeah. If that first illustration didn't make a whole lot of sense to so, some people, it's good to have another one. So the, the second illustration is that we are continuously plagued with sin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, there's never a point in our life where we stop being tempted. Mm -hmm. And how do we keep from sort of stumbling backwards? Yeah. And so I want you to picture a bucket that's full of just scummy pond water. Sure. Right? And you just let it sit and it just gets grosser. Yep. Whatever. Right? <laughs> now, uh, if you were to dump that bucket out mm -hmm. and put clean water in it mm -hmm. and you just left it there and you came back two, week la two weeks later, mm -hmm. what would you have? Still pretty dirty water. Yeah. The, every, the... Everything that was on the bucket would yeah. have just regrown in the stagnant water. Right. And you would just have scummy water again. Right. And so uh, instead what I want you to picture is us as uh, buckets of just pond water. Mm -hmm. And and this is more of an illustration of sanctification of being made holy than it is of salvation. Okay. But uh, we are this bucket of pummies Pummy, <laughs> scummy pond water, and we're right below a tap. Yeah. Uh, like a hose tap outside or something. Sure. And when we accept Christ, like, we, the water gets turned on. And if we are clean water mm -hmm. is, is Christ or whatever, mm -hmm. as long as that tap is flowing into that bucket, mm -hmm. it's going to be displacing that dirty water. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the, you know, the water will be running pretty clean. Yeah. Now, as soon as we turn off that tap, mm -hmm. all of that pond scum will regrow because we are here in this broken world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's, there's no point where we can just turn off the tap and walk away and have no change. Mm -hmm. That starts growing again. Mm -hmm. those, those bacteria or the moss or the whatever yeah. starts growing. And it's trying to grow the entire time, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's just constantly being displaced by this clean water that's just constantly flowing into the bucket. Yeah. So in the same way, as when the more continuously and consistently we're pursuing God, mm -hmm. the harder it is we're making it for us to slide backwards into sin. Mm -hmm. As soon as we stop pursuing God, as soon as we stop uh, feeding on God, mm -hmm. we give it space to just start regrowing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we are recreated uh, as a new creation mm -hmm. in heaven, mm -hmm. we'll have a clean bucket, right? Yeah. And there's, there's not going to be this, this fight to uh, be filled with clean water faster than it grows. Sure. At the same time, we're going to just be overflowed with clean water. Right. But the, the, the importance of this analogy is that it's never done. Mm -hmm. You never get a pass to step back from God and be fine. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you step back from God, mm -hmm. that moss, that bacteria, all of that is mm -hmm. just taking off. Yeah. And so uh, the solution to a long-term lifestyle of not being a slave to sin mm -hmm. is a long-term lifestyle of pursuing God diligently. Mm -hmm. There isn't any other real option. Yeah, absolutely. And I think those two illustrations are really helpful because um, it's one thing to just kind of us be talking about it or Josh talking about it, me asking the questions, to not really like visually see it, I guess. I'm a visual learner, so those illustrations are super helpful for me to kind of have a little bit better of an understanding of now what do we do or what do I do about my sin now too. Um, so I think these past few weeks have been super beneficial for me to just sit down and talk to you about it. I know you got a lot of different thoughts going yeah. on in your brain, and so this is very very helpful for myself and also for our students too. And I'll just kind of reiterate what I said last week too. If you still have any other questions or if there's some, still something that maybe didn't make sense to you and you want some more clarification, I know Josh. Um, Josh will be glad to answer those questions for you. Or if you have any other questions, Josh would love to talk to you about them. I would love to talk to you about them. Andrew, Sarah. Yeah. An important thing about this being pre-recorded is that it's in no way uh, intentional to distance yeah. ourselves from your yeah. questions. We absolutely want to be hearing mm -hmm. uh, anything you have in mm -hmm. terms of questions, in terms of misunderstandings, in terms of just literally anything. Yeah. Like we are here for you and this is not, uh, this step is is practical yeah. and in terms of why we're not being live. Absolutely. Uh, but we absolutely desire for you to be as connected as you could yeah. possibly want to be. Absolutely. So even if it's like, a silly question like mm -hmm. what's your favorite shape of tater tot like ask <laughs> Lindsay like sure. anything reach out but but definitely feel free to reach yeah. out about the hard topics about things you're uncertain of mm -hmm. um, I mean like I said there was a point where I was like talking to like 10 guys a week about purity or something sure. like clearly I'm not afraid right. of having <laughs> rough conversations you know without any sort yeah. of, of judgment. Like the only judgment Absolutely. is that we were born into sin mm -hmm. and we're fighting it. Absolutely, yeah. Exactly what Josh said, he worded that perfectly. Um, but tune in next week to find out what we're gonna be talking about for our deep dive. Um, but again, if you have any other questions, please don't feel, or please feel free to reach out to us. But have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>